Hi, Caleb with Brownells here. And in today's tech tip, we're gonna be installing the Daniel Defense MFR rail. So this handguard here is one of the, I'll say, you know, depending on when you're watching this, newer handguards from Daniel Defense. Uh, and it is a full length, free float, M-lock handguard. So it mounts using somewhat similar to the traditional Daniel Defense style mount up system. So we'll go through that, but first, Let's talk about what tools we're going to need to install this. All right, so the first thing we're going to need here is, of course, the barrel nut wrench that comes with the handguard. And then also included are these two hex wrenches here, one of which is a ball end, which is super handy. I'll show you why. Whenever we get to it, they also include a bit of Loctite as well. And I'll show you when and where to use that also. We're also going to need the uh, actual torque wrench to torque down our barrel nut and then we're going to need some sort of fixture to hold our upper receiver uh, while we do this whole thing. I'm going to be using the Midwest Industries upper receiver rod and you can use you know whatever your favorite fixture is for holding receivers and it'll work just fine. And then I also have some Brownells Action Loop Plus. I always use a bit of grease whenever I'm installing barrels and upper receivers and barrel nuts. All right so Let's go ahead and go over the parts we're going to need. So of course the handguard itself, and that's going to come with a barrel nut and these two mounting brackets here, and I'll show you which one goes where, don't worry. And then our four mounting bolts. And then they also include this little piece here, if you're wondering what this is for. Uh, this is for a QD sling mount. Uh, there are some built in, but if you need another one, uh, there's another one for you. All right, so we're gonna need, of course, a upper receiver. Upper receiver of your choice will work just fine, but you need to make sure uh, that it's either a mil spec upper receiver or if it's a billet upper receiver you're using, you need to make sure that this front area right here in the front is machined down to you know what a mil spec receiver would be. Now, the reason is, is because this mounting bracket is gonna slide right up on there. So some older billet receivers have this area enlarged. This will not fit without some modification, but you should be fine in most cases. All right, so then of course, we're gonna need an AR-15 barrel. Again, barrel of your choosing will work just fine. Uh, we have our gas tube and gas block here. We're gonna, of course, need that as well. Um, muzzle device, you know, use your favorite muzzle device. We're not gonna be going over that in this video. All right, and as far as parts go, that is everything you need. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is put our upper receiver rod in the vise. And I'll just slide our receiver onto that. And then we're gonna need to install our barrel first. Uh, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of this Brownells Action Lube Plus. Put that on the barrel extension. And slide this into the upper receiver. There we go. And I wanna make sure I get a little bit of grease on that front shoulder there where that barrel, mut barrel nut's gonna line up. All right, that's there. All right, so now that we have the barrel installed, we can actually go ahead and take this mounting plate I was referring to earlier, and notice how it has two tabs on it. Those two tabs are gonna face the receiver, uh, but actually to make things a lot easier on yourself later down the road, what you're gonna to need to do is take your bolts and drop them in from the direction of those tabs. We'll do just like this here. Then we'll take this and slide it onto the receiver with those tabs going up against the upper receiver itself. And these bolts will kind of want to fall out on you. Um, the two top ones you can actually put back in later on. I have them in now, but the two bottom ones, in order to get in there, they need to be they need to be on right now. So I'll just go ahead and leave them all there. Then we'll take our barrel nut. Notice that one side's threaded, one side's flat. We're just gonna put a little bit of grease on that threaded side. 
and with the reds first, slide it over the barrel. And we're gonna screw it into our upper receiver. And we're gonna go hand tight until we can't tighten it anymore. All right, so that's on there. Now we can take the included barrel nut wrench and our torque wrench set to 35 foot pounds will be plenty. We will put this 90 degrees on our torque wrench here. And we will tighten it down. It fits pretty tight onto the barrel nut, so you gotta be deliberate about it here. And actually, we'll come from the top since we have those screws on the bottom. There we go, just like that. Make sure we have room, we do, perfect. And then again, 90 degrees. And torque it down. There we go. So the important thing to remember whenever you're torquing that down is that you're actually not binding the wrench against any of the screws, uh, which it's easy to do. You have plenty of room to torque it down without doing that. All right, so now that our barrel, uh, the barrel nut is installed and torqued down, now our barrel's on there nice and tight, we can go ahead and take this, uh, this next mounting plate and install that as well. So if you notice, one end has this flange on it and the other end is inletted. We're gonna take that inletted end and slide it over that barrel nut. So that'll go in first. And we'll just align it with the screws. There we go. All right, there we go, just like that. Now you can go ahead and install your gas system. So just take your gas block and gas tube, slide it over through the hole on your two plates into your receiver. Now make sure your gas system's aligned and tighten this down. All right, so this is on here. All right, so now you can actually take the handguard, slide it over all the way back. And it's gonna push up against those screws. So now, or actually what we should do at this point, what you're gonna need to do is get a little bit of Loctite on those screws and the included Loctite here We'll just break that open and I'll put a little bit on the table. You don't need much of it, so. That'll be plenty. I'll just take the back side of that same Q-tip we're using, wipe it on there and just put a little bit on the threads and I'll do the same thing for each screw. All right, and slide that handguard back. And using the ball end of our included wrench, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these screws down. So I'm gonna go ahead and start in the top right hand corner. Doesn't matter which screw you start on, um, but you're gonna need to, to go in like an X pattern. So you crisscross these four bolts here. I'm gonna tighten this one down snug, but not tight. Now, since that was the top right hand corner, the next one's gonna be the bottom left-hand corner. We'll knock that out real quick here. Same thing, not tight, but snug. And then opposite side here. This one's a little bit trickier because of that ejection port. Nice and snug. And then again, the last opposite screw. All right, so now that we have all these nice and snug, what we're gonna be looking for are any big gaps 
in these mounting plates. So if all the mounting plates are like this, nice and flat, parallel to each other, no big gaps or anything like that, you know, your bottom piece of the handguard is locking in just like that here. I'll do a turn so you guys can see. Now once you end up with this, you can go ahead and tighten everything down. And I'm not going to any specific torque setting or anything like that uh, because getting a torque wrench in here uh, would be pretty difficult. But I'm just going to snug these screws up. I'm going to tighten them. I mean, you don't have to go hardcore, you know, crazy tight on them. Get under that ejection port. There we go. And again, same same pattern you were doing before. All right, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Now this handguard is installed on this upper receiver assembly. Now all that's left to do is just install, you know, whatever muzzle device you choose, charging handle, bolt carrier group, uh, the easy stuff. So if you have any questions or comments, or if you have any experience with this particular handguard, let us know in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And for future installation videos, go ahead and uh, hit that notification bell as well. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.